Welcome back with the Plat. We're doing another Swords video today. Now, you might have some questions about this single player mode. I've talked about it in pretty much every video I've released for this game so far. Um, and I have more information now, just because I've played it a bit more now, um, of what it's like. How does, does the gotcha system interact with it? Um, is it really completely separate of the gotcha? That kind of stuff. And how does it actually play out? So, again, this is going to be off the demo. So, not, this isn't necessarily final. I'm sure most of this is going to be in the game but I don't have a hundred hours into the game, right? So this is still kind of, I'm just trying to give you guys who haven't tried the game at all, some information about what this free to play version of the game is going to look like. So first and foremost, is this mode completely devoid of gotcha? Like I said, or that like it's kind of sold as the answer is no, not really, but kind of. So from my understanding is when you start a, a trial there's basically two things that concern me regarding this mode even though it is incredibly free to play friendly um the spiral of destinies is what it's called you when you start this mode you get to bring in it's three four or five characters basically now they are going to be from your pool of characters that you own so the power level within this is going to be set and it's basically the power no matter how strong your character is outside of this mode and the gotcha it's not going to affect this. So if you have a five awakening super every unit in the game fully maxed out, they're still going to start at level one without most of their abilities and stuff in this mode is my understanding. And that's what it seems to be. But the option, if you have one of every character, you'll have more options of characters you could bring in here. So I think it's mostly just going to give you more fun replayability by giving you different characters, but there's no doubt there's going to be stronger characters over time. So there is a gotcha element in the sense, if as long as you have one of each character, you should be able to fully maximize them in this mode, but you don't need one of every character. You'll be able to get through it with pretty much any cast of characters they give you. The big selling point of this mode for a lot of people is that it's free to play friendly and it's fun and it's replayable and it will get people into the game. So I doubt that they're going to power creep this to the moon to make it so people can't engage with it without spending lots of money as it's one of their big selling points to get a bigger amount of people into the ecosystem in the first place. Now, number two, when I first did this, it took keys, a key of destiny. This, this does concern me a little bit. They gave me 20 and for it, I, I'm not even exaggerating for one key. It gave me 10 hours of gameplay, roughly. I'm not even 10 hours in yet, but it's basically, it gets you one go through of this mode. And so that was about, that's about 10 hours, um, you know, eight to 10, something like that. If you're listening to the story, I'm sure if you rush, you could speed run it faster than that. So I'm like, that's incredibly generous. But at that point, why even have the key? I don't know. I don't know if there's just like a bunch of rewards tied to this mode that I haven't seen yet. How hard are the keys going to be to get? Are you going to need to spend money? Are you going to get one key a month, one key a week, one key a day? I don't know. Um, so the, the key system is concerning to me, I'll admit. Um, however, if they're very generous with the keys and like the only way you run out of keys is like, hey, you, you play this game eight hours every single day and you want it, you're trying to use five keys a week. Like you're trying to go through a 10 hour story segment every day of the week. Like maybe that's like, all right, well now you want you to spend some money for that. But anyone else that plays like two, two or three times a week, you can get it. No problem. Then I'm not as concerned about it, but I, I, I am a little concerned about it still until I actually know exactly how it goes. But basically you're going to use a key. You're going to choose your characters. You're going to go into a cycle. When you go into a cycle, you get you choose your characters and you're going to start recruiting more characters within the own story itself like Feichel is a character i did not bring in but he is part of the story so he is on my team even though when i leave the gotcha he is or leave this sorry this part of the mode he's not on my team at all um but so their power levels all reset to one their awakenings or their their traits and stuff they all kind of get reset to a low level and you basically and even their gear and their skill options you just level them up within this mode so it's like they all start at the beginning of a campaign and as you go through the campaign they are going to grow in power level um and you're going to recruit new characters depending on what you do you'll actually go to the tavern and specifically choose new characters to recruit um so it, it's like you are playing a normal single player game in a lot of ways maybe it's not as fleshed out in all the ways of like a final fantasy tactics um, but I mean, it's, it's pretty comprehensive here. So just a couple of the things you do, right? Like every, you go through like weeks, almost like a fire emblem thing. Um, and every week you're going to do like a quest. It, it, these will expand as you get further. You could dispatch characters out and you could like choose what you want. You know, oh, I have missions. So you'll send characters that you can't bring into battle. They'll go complete missions. These are missions that you're specifically going to do. You can take an overlook of the 
uh, factions, kind of what, how is the world looking at you? This will change depending on different uh, decisions you make, you know, and different endings. Um, another thing here, if we go to the town, one, you could just kind of walk around town as well. Like you could use the map, but if you want to just like walk around town, how the fuck do I leave this building? I never leave this building. I don't remember how to leave this building. We're going to go, we're just going to go to the uh, town square here. And so like you could walk around the town and kind of explore it or whatever, but there's lots of systems in here too, right? There's a forge, there's a tavern where you recruit people, there's training ground where you get characters stronger. The haven is how you basically uh, rest people and heal them. The Luxite Workshop has got a couple mechanics here. You could upgrade basically. You have like these abilities that you as the commander, like that you're not fighting yourself, but you as the commander can use these abilities in combat, basically like instant spells to give your uh, characters advantages on this. And there's lots of ways. So there's like, there's a lot here. It's 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 got a pretty good system and everything has been contained into this into this game mode itself. For the gotcha, if you spend a hundred thousand dollars on the gotcha in the very first three weeks of the game, it does not appear that it'll affect this experience at all, other than the initial character options you get. So that is basically what this mode is. Um but like let me give you an example here. So if you just to show you kind of exactly what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the characters. Let's go take a look. I've left. This is now I am in the, the primary gotcha mode of the game. If I take a look at a character that I have here, right? Right now, she's level six. She's rank one. I can't really get dupes or whatever. Um, it's just like not where uh, I'm at in the game because it's I'm still in the demo. But all right, here we go. I've got this passive guard ability. These are the skills that I have. That, um, this is the equipment I have. She's level six, rank one with no dupes. But you can kind of take a look at this. There's also something here. Clear in three one. There's like another a third piece of gear here. But when you go into the single player mode, Spiral of Destinies, and now I go look at my characters again, the same exact character, her level is going to be different. And that might actually ironically be the same, but it, it doesn't point as she started at level one. It just she leveled up in the last battle. But you can see here, like, yes, I did get I got defense enhancement, which I think is a different one. And I think last stands a different one as well. Um, she doesn't have the same stuff and the tailored training is different than the other thing. So it's like, this is a different power progression. She doesn't have her gear that she has. So this is like separated, which is very, very cool. Um, so it's a real, it's really a way to enjoy a single player game completely for free. Now be aware you are in the ecosystem of a gotcha game. So you got to keep that in mind. It's gotcha games. They, there's a reason they're called gotcha, you know, so you got to be careful and kind of pay attention to what you're doing and make sure you know yourself. But as long as you can do that, um, I think you'll have a good time. But one more thing I want to take a look here. If we leave here, one of the big selling points of this mode, other than it being free to play, other than it being having a lot of time, there is a something called, I think it's called this voyage map here. But it, it, this is not going to look impressive yet. But basically, there are a bunch of endings. And so every time you get through the story, the idea is to go through the story again, making different choices, and it'll give you like a different outcome. And you could choose different uh, beacons and the different beacons will like they'll alter the starting conditions and the starting conditions will then make it much easier to get other endings that you might want to go for so you should be able to pretty easily get whatever you need to like if you want to explore all the different content it should be pretty easy but the whole point is even though it's 10 hours ish to get through probably the story the first time um i believe it's going to be much easier to go through it multiple times and as you can see here there's this whole progression system here as well like I don't know what the hell this is. We'll figure out more about this. I'm thinking this is for when you complete the game and you'll unlock resources based on what you did. And this isn't going to be getting gotten from the gotcha because you're going to be getting characters from the gotcha. Um, but there's just, this is a very in-depth system. Um, and it's honestly, I think it's a huge selling point for the game in general. But yeah, that's kind of what the game is like. If you have any more questions about this mode, leave them down in the comments below. Again, I'm still in the demo, so I don't have all the information. Um, as I learn more, as I play more, and as I get hopefully access to the game um, sooner rather than later, I'll just keep making videos, keep letting you guys know what it's about. Um, and then I'll be doing guides and stuff like that, free-to-play guides, uh, pay-to-win guides, character reviews, stuff like that. What character should you pull for? What, what's the re-roll re guide? That kind of stuff. Once I just have more information, because I'm still learning the game myself. Um, but yeah, that stuff will be coming out. Anyway, much love for platypus is for platypus. I'll see you on the flip-flops. Bye! Platypus on the rise, watch the news go.